but good to be in the house of God. Right. Yeah. And yeah. His way. How many know that God never ignores those who call on Him? Come on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even though we might have failed God or come short of God's word, God will never ignore a person who calls on Him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even though some people have rebelled against God or rejected God hate God. But the moment they call on Him, God never ignores Him. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I know atheists. God hates us. But when God's Spirit began to deal with them, and they responded, God never turned His back on them. Amen. Know God never turns His back on Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. How many times God is a God who will never ignore? Yes. 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 Come Amen. On. And He's a God who will never ignore what goes on in your life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. What goes on in your life, it doesn't matter whether you know Him or not. God will never ignore someone who is in a desperate need. God remembers them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many thank God? God is a God who will never ignore his name. Amen. And let's pray. Our gracious God and loving Heavenly Father. We want to praise you and thank you, Lord, for this evening. That which you're about to do is so awesome and so marvelous. That Lord, you're ready now, Lord, to move upon our lives and show us, Lord, that you're a God who will never ignore us. No matter what goes on in our lives, we want to praise you and thank you. Lord, I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor, Lord, for thou art the Prince of Peace and the God of Glory. Thou doeth all things, will doeth all things well. Thank you, Lord, for that great deliverance. And thank you, Lord, for removing the things that need to be removed for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Open the Bible to the book of Genesis. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The 21st chapter. Reading from verse 15. Genesis 21. Reading from verse 15. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the land. And the angel of the Lord called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the land where he is. Arise, lift up the land, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the water with water, and gave the lad drink. And God was with the land, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. May the Lord bless us for the reading of his word. Keep that page open. We have just read 
about a woman whose name was Hagar. She was an Egyptian. She was the maid attached to Abraham's wife, Sarah. So Hagar is an Egyptian maid to serve Sarah. And we see in days pass by, Sarah arranges that Abraham must go and lay with Hagar and somehow bring forth a child. There was Sarah's plan. Hagar is now being used. Listen to this. Hagar is now being used. She's an innocent lady. She's a servant to Sarah. Sarah is her boss. And she uses Hagar being a servant. And she had control over her. She had power over her. Hagar was dependent on Sarah or her livelihood. And so she yielded to serve Sarah in that capacity that Abraham could father a child. So because she was an employee there, she yielded. And now she is carrying child and she bring forth a child and his name was Ishmael. In the meanwhile, Sarah got pregnant. She had a son and so she decided to drive away Hagar and Ishmael away. So she tells Abraham, put them out. So Abraham goes to the Lord and the Lord tells Abraham, listen to your wife. Why? Because for the first time, Abraham listened to Sarah and Sarah ordered him to have a child to Hagar. So Abraham Instead of going to the Lord, he listened to his wife and he did. So God said, you go back and listen to your wife again. And so she, he listens to her and it tore Abraham's heart to put her and Ishmael away. So he gave her food and a skin of water, they call it bottles in those days. And she journeyed. Was it Hagar's fault? Not at all. As an employee, she did what Sarah told her to do. How many know God knows the truth of every matter? Yeah. Praise God. Sometimes people become victims. Sometimes people get used by someone. Hello, praise God. Amen. Sometimes people put us in a bind and they use you. Come on, to get their job done. And then you get hurt like Hagar and Ishmael got hurt. And Hagar and Ishmael left. The food was over. The water was over. It was desert. More than 140 degrees is the temperature. So the boy got dehydrated and he also was starving. Starvation, <coughs> dehydration gripped the child and the child was dying. The helpless mother puts him in a bush because she couldn't bear to see him die. And she began to cry. She didn't pray, she, she just cried because her son is going to die. Look at God. Even though Hagar 
is an Egyptian, worships an Egyptian god, an Egyptian maid to Sarah. And Sarah ignored her, used her, and then ignored. How many there are people who use you and then ignore you? Amen. God is speaking to people tonight. People have used you and now ignore you and don't care about you any longer. Praise God. There are people like this who will use you and then ignore you. <coughs> Repeating, who will use you and then ignore you. Because you're an underdog, you're a nobody, you are just used. Come on, like a Paul, you're just used. But do you know God pays attention to those who have been misused by others? Though someone might have used you, and today they may ignore you and neglect you. But God is speaking to those this evening, you are sitting here. God has not forgotten you. Praise God, hallelujah, God is going to look out for you. And God will never ignore you. And so God calls up and said, Hagar, what's the matter? She thought Abraham had to give up, ignored and neglected by Abraham's household. Just imagine what's going on in her mind. I was employed as a maid. I was used by them because they were my employers. And now after they got the benefit out of me, they began to show their true colors. They ignore you, they neglect you, and they reject you. Is it not? They ignore you, they can reject you. That's how she felt. And when she was crying, God spoke to her and said, Hey now, what is bothering you? What is ailing you? He said, I've heard the lad cry. And God says, go pick him up in your hands. And when she picked up that dying lad in her hands, God promised her something so wonderful. Though they have used you and neglect you and reject you, but I am going to bless you and bless his faith and make him also a great nation. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. How many believe God looks out for those who have been misused? Come on now. Amen. Those who have been ignored, rejected, and neglected. Amen. Some of you are going through those feelings, going through those emotions. And the Lord spoke to me tonight. He is going to settle the matter for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. He is going to settle the matter for you. How many are ready for God's divine intervention? Amen. How many times God, even though Hagar was not a Jewish woman, she was a pagan, a pagan worshiper, an idol worshiper. But look at God. When he heard this lady crying because her son is going to die, God comes to her defense. And God comes to take care of her and her son and open a fountain for her yes. that she could have enough to drink. How many believe God pays close attention yes. of everything that goes on in your life? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. God wants to encourage you this evening. It doesn't matter people whom you have helped, people whom you have supported, People whom you have been kind to, today they ignore you, they reject you, they neglect you. It doesn't matter. God says, I look out for you. Come on, God is looking out for you. Amen. So praise the Lord, hallelujah. In other words, it doesn't matter if the whole world ignores you, neglects you and rejects you. They may have used you for their own selfish purposes. <laughs> And today they want to drop you like a stone and get rid of you. Amen. But God said, not to fear. I will settle the matter for you. Yes. And take good care of you. Yes. 
Yeah. Why is God intervening in our lives? Because He is a God of the helpless. Come on, praise God. You know, there are people who are powerful. You know, they are powerful in many ways. They have all kinds of connections. They have all kinds of connections. And you may be an underdog. You may be a nobody. But God is going to look out for you. Amen. Because you are someone special to God. How many believe you are a special instrument in God's hand? And God is going to look out for you. It doesn't matter how much strength is on the other side. You may feel weak and vulnerable. You may say, well, I don't have anyone to help me. But the Lord spoke to me tonight and said, tell them that I am going to settle the matter and settle the issue for them. You are sitting right here in this church. Amen. How many believe God will come to your defense? Yes. Not only come, He will rush to your defense. Yes. Glory, hallelujah. God will rush to your defense. Yes. All we need to do, praise God, don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your hope. Come on, don't give up on what God has blessed you with. But God says to him, God, lift up that child. She lifted that dying child. And I love what God said. And he said, look at what he said. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in the hand. I, for I will make him a great nation. Amen. Come on now, pray. Look at the word, the nation. It was the Middle East. Now that nation is fragmented into different countries in the Middle East. Let me know. It is fragmented into different countries. I repeat. Keep that in mind. It is fragmented into different countries. We have Kuwait, we have Iraq, we have Iran, we, we have all several nations. Qatar, we have all kinds of small, small nations. But actually what they were, they were one nation actually. God said, look at, look at the language. Now you look at the language, what he says. For I will make him a great nation. So we are looking there as a unified Middle East. How many can see a unified Middle East? Not a fragmented Middle East, but a unified Middle East. What's going on now in the Middle East is related to this prophecy. How many can see, praise God, hallelujah, there is a great trust for the unification of the nations in the Middle East. Iran wants to bring back the former Persian Empire. There were two giants in the Middle East. Saddam Hussein thought he was the reincarnation of Nebuchadnezzar and Nineveh, praise God, and part of that story, and Babylon. And so he took pride in rebuilding, come on, and restructuring and bringing back the memories of Nebuchadnezzar by now building the hanging gardens of Babylon. How many know they were one of the wonders of the old world? Amen. Those who have gone to school, you knew the wonders of the old world. Is it not? Come on, praise God, hallelujah. Amen. Those are one of the wonders of the old world. And so when we read this story so wonderfully unfolded, so Saddam Hussein represents Nebuchadnezzar Babylon and Iran represents the Persian world. So two empires are clashing. Two, empire, two people are trying to resurrect. Two empires. One was Saddam Hussein trying to resurrect Babylon and Iran trying to resurrect the Persian Empire. How many of you remember the historical conflict that lasts for seven years? The war between Iraq and Iran. What was it? It was the battle of supremacy. Saddam Hussein wanted to make the entire Middle East as Babylon, and Iran wanted to make the entire Middle East as the Persian Empire. How many the other word for Iran is Persian? Amen. Praise God, another word for Iran is Persian. And so we are looking, how many can see it is the same war going on now with the new twists. How many can see Iran is striving hard? To form a unified Middle East. How many of you read today's newspaper? Today's newspaper. 
Iran is now ready to come to the negotiating table now to end the conflict in the Middle East, especially in Syria. When I looked at it, it is nothing but the Bible prophecy. God says, Arise, lift up Ishmael in your hand, and I'll make you into a great nation. The land that the nation that God gave Ishmael was one nation at one time. Then it was fragmented into, into what we call the empire of the Babylonians, the empire of the Persians, the Assyrians. It was all kind of, how many can see Syria in the picture today? Syria is also. So Assad is trying to raise the what? The Assyrian Empire. So three great giants, Assad for the Assyrian Empire, Saddam Hussein was for resurrecting Babylon, and uh, Iran to resurrect, come on, Iran to resurrect what? The Persian Empire, three great forces. How many can see those three major players are playing today? So what is going on in the Middle East today is the battle for control for a unified Middle East. So ISIS, what you call ISIS, how many of you know its name is called the Islamic Nation? I wrote this paper in 1981, even before these things happened, when I was doing my research in political science. The, the real movement, how many can see ISIS represent all the countries in the Middle East, and they want what is called the whole Middle East should become one Islamic nation. How many can see this happening exactly what is in the Bible days? How many can see God's word is so accurate? When you read the book of Ezekiel, you can see the realignment of the whole Middle East. What is going on today in the Middle East is now someone wants to say we should become one nation. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that is the battle that is going on. And you see the merciless killings of innocent people in between. There's no more respect for human life in the Middle East. There's only one agenda. Each one is trying to become one empire of its own. Assad is trying to the Russian help, is it not? Iran tries with the Russian help. Hello, praise God, hallelujah. And Saddam, before he switched sides, he was, he was, United States helped Saddam once in the war. He helped Iraq in the war. But how many know he back? He betrayed that confidence and then went on his own. So now we are facing again the same thing. How many of us know, praise God, God's word is so accurate yes. and you can depend on it. Amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. How many can see the how many can see God gave them one nation, but they were fragmented many pieces. But how many can see now they are realigning again? And just like Europe, how many know Europe is fragmented by different nations, Britain, England, Scotland, you name it, Germany. Is it not? You see the whole Middle East. Germany was a divided nation. How many of you remember Germany was divided? Mm -hmm. The younger generation may not know, but we were older now. We had East Germany and West Germany. But the Bible talks about only one Germany in the book of Ezekiel. And can, can you believe it became one nation? How we can see God's word came to pass. Yeah. Why I am bringing this? Why I am bringing this? It's because we are living in the most exciting of times. Yeah. Because when these things are happening, we are going to see, come on now, praise God, the coming of Jesus in the clouds of God. It's going to be a But in the midst of these things that are happening, we as Christians who have made up our minds to do what's right, for example, let me go and show you something which will help you understand this subject. Open your Bible, the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the thirty-eighth chapter. If you have a pen and paper, you can make these notes. I think they're recording it too, so you can use what you want to. <coughs> Praise God, hallelujah. Look at Ezekiel chapter 38. What you're going to hear is not the spiritual view. Let me tell you. What you're going to hear is not the spiritual view. What you're going to hear is the actual political development and the political history 
that God spoke about what is going to take place in times to come. Look at what he says in the first verse. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, let thy face set thy face against God, means Russia, Russia, and the land of Magog, bigger than the land of Russia, is China. The chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. It represents 30 also involved. How many can see? How many can see this? All these years, Russia and China were dead enemies. How many of you know that history? They were dead enemies. They were never friends. For the first time in our generation, Vladimir Putin embarked on a journey now to engage China and they to become one force. And Vladimir Putin succeeded in persuading China for the first time. And now God and Magog, the word and means they come together. Did you know this unification of their political friendship between Russia and China took place in our generation, in our times, in the last few months? This prophecy was written nearly 2700 years ago, but we see now for the first time China and Russia have now become friends and now they have a perpetual contract between both of them. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Years ago I was writing out my paper on collective security when I was doing my research in political science and this is what God gave it to me. So at that time I was not safe. I was uh, just a normal human being but the Lord gave this scripture to me and when I got saved and I got the Bible I was so shocked to see the developments take place then when you look at this I want you to pay close attention how many can see now Russia and China have got a now a firm unity Russia China has got the money and Russia come on has got the military and the oil Okay, China couldn't become a superpower without the help of Russia. Now, come on, these two are joining forces. It happened in our times. For the first time after this unity took place, China embarked on a new program to dethrone the US dollar. It was the news to dethrone the US dollar and replace it with a Chinese currency and to become the major currency in the world. Do you know always in any country you go, the first country on the currency chart is the United States. Yeah. Now there are five nations that are joined to support China's currency and China is becoming a major player in their currency. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. Do you know China when they bought oil from Russia, they always paid Russia in the US dollar. The US dollar is the universal currency between nations. When nations traded with one another, they did not pay with their own currency, they paid with the US dollar. The US dollar is almost the universal unit of currency or trading even between nations. But do you know after this unity of China and Russia, now for the first time, China pays Russia not in the US dollar, but in their own money. <coughs> Come on, praise God, hallelujah. How many can see China's currency is now playing a major role in many economies? Yes. That was the dream of Genghis Khan. When he brought China together and destroyed all the little factions, that was the dream of Genghis Khan that Chinese influence in commerce would be all over the world and that they have a global economy. Come on, that was the dream of Genghis Khan. And now we are seeing that dream come into play. So yes, I'm just bringing you the political history so that you can understand the Bible that there is no other religion in the Iman record. There is no other religion in this world like we have what is called the Bible. Yeah. The Bible is so accurate 
about the past, the present, and the future of the world. There is no religious book that can give us a graphic account and the chronological order of the events to take place and the, in, into the years that are to come. How many of us know we are holding one of the most profound documents that is, that is more than enough to help us come on travel to, this, to these times knowing to serve the Lord. Hallelujah, praise God in the name of Jesus. So we are somebody can see how what China is doing. Now, now we have two, and this paper I wrote years ago, and I'm on record, and I know I'm going to get many questions, but that is a fact. China has a dog that barks, and Russia has a dog that barks too. This is the first time I'm speaking this subject since 1981. China's dog is North Korea. Amen. It makes North Korea bark at the United States. Come on now. Yes. We're going to see if the United States would react to this barking dog. I'm on record, just okay. And China, and now Russia has a dog, and that dog is Iran. When Russia says something, Iran starts acting funny towards the United States and the world community. How many can see that? What Russia does, then and Iran begins to act funny. Can you see that? So these were the two dogs that they were using to bark at night, say, seeing if they would react. Come on, seeing if they would react. But only no praise God, hallelujah. God has some of our leaders in his hands and he lets them know what to do. Yes. Amen. How can see that? Praise God, hallelujah. See, North Korea is tempted in the United States to act. Iran, through its nuclear program, is tempting the United States to act. But God has guided our leaders. Some of you know that's why God's word says, Pray for your leaders. Yes. And you can see the Are we praying for our leaders? As Christians, we must get involved in the political process. Amen. Come on, we must get involved in the political process. In, in electing, come on, electing good Christian leaders. Come on, good Christian Amen. leaders with great moral values. Praise God, hallelujah. Who are not ashamed, not afraid to stand their ground and defend the truth. Yes. Yes. Praise God, hallelujah. How many believe this world needs someone? And God comes on the church and the church members to stand to defend that which is right. Yes. Glory, hallelujah, praise God. How many are ready to say, I've got to participate yes. in the political process, in the social process, in the economic process, in the moral process of our country and our nation? Yes. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. And that's why you know, we people don't, many people don't understand this. But how many can see the truth? How many can see, after I explain to you, how many can see what's really going on? Amen. So Iran teases the United States, North Korea sees the United States, thinking they may get into war. Why? Then Russia and China want to help each other. How many know Russia is openly going to help Iran and also Syria? How many know it's happening? In 1981, I wrote this paper of how these people are going to do. And I'm so shocked the time I was not a Christian. But God put that in my heart, praise God, my mind, now to see what's going on. Okay, how many can see this unification took place in our times? It's not it's going to get exciting. Look at verse 3. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. How many know Turkey suddenly switched sides? Turkey was a friend of the United States. Now they are shifting their allegiance toward the Russian to the northern block. How many can see that has happened in our times? Now look further. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all the army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with swords of armor, even a great company, bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. So God said, I'll bring you out from the north and bring you to the Middle East. What's going on now? Come on, what's going on now? Russia, for the first time, is going to plan to have their own base in Syria. How many can see this is happening in our own yes. times? <laughs> is this Bible relevant? Come on, is this Bible relevant? Yes. It is relevant. 
it will be foolish on the part of the Christian to ignore and reject the content in the word of God. How many believe? Let us embrace the word of God and let us start to study and come on, oh, praise God, and learn the truth. I'm just giving the just the basic things about the political side of the Bible. Let me tell you, Bible is just not a spiritual insight to us. It's also giving us political insight, the political future of the world. How many can see these are things? Yeah. Now look what's going to happen. Very interesting. Look at verse 5. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. Look at the word Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. Did you know Persia means Iran? Until 1979, Iran had what you call a ruler called the Shah of Iran. How many of you remember that? We had the Shah of Iran. Right. He was the friend of the United States. They were doing good. But in 1979, in our own generation, Ayatollah Khomeini, how many of you remember that? Ayatollah Khomeini rose up and there was an Islamic revolution and he overthrew the Shah of Iran and guess what? After they overthrew the Shah of Iran, the first thing Ayatollah Khomeini did was sign into the Northern Convention and ask Russia to be the defender. How many Iran has signed an agreement with Russia for help? So when President Bush warned Amendijad of dire consequences because of what he was doing and was ready to attack, how many of you remember Vladimir Putin said, if the US attacks Iran, Russia will come to their aid. How many can see Persia joins with them? It happened in our own times. How many believe the book of Ezekiel is not yet finished? We are right in the middle of it. Look at the next word. He said, Ethiopia. How many of you remember the great famine in Ethiopia in 1974 when hundreds and hundreds of children and thousands of people died? And there was a communist revolution. And that's how Ethiopian joins with that group. That happened in our time. Look at the next word, Libya. Come on, look at the word Libya. That's the time I was writing my paper. President Reagan was in office. And Muammar Gaddafi threatened both the USSR and USA. If you have read newspapers at that time, you would have read these headlines. Libya threatened both USA and USSR. And threatened to attack this country and as well as the president. And President Reagan ordered the bombing of Tripoli. How many of you remember that instance? Or the bomb Tripoli. And Muammar Gaddafi narrowly escaped. That same afternoon, during the day, there was a news item saying that Muammar Gaddafi is now ready to join the Warsaw Convention. What is the Warsaw Convention? It is the nothing but the headed by the communist bloc. And guess what? Muammar Gaddafi, Libya also joins them. It happened in our own generation. Yes. That's the time when I was writing my paper. When I found this, I was not say it, but when I was doing my research, I had this. But when I found this, I said, oh my, what am I holding? Is it the blueprint for the future of the world? And little after that, the Lord saved me and brought me to the fold and I began to see the truth as so real. Come on, friend, praise God, hallelujah. It will be insanity on a part of a Christian saying, Oh, I don't need to hear this. All I want God is to take care of my family, keep me healed. I don't care what happened nation, who gets elected, and what's the moral what's the morality of this nation, it doesn't bother me anymore. No, my friend, if that's what you believe, then you don't have the mind of God. Amen. How many believe God wants us to take care of this world? Yes. Praise God, hallelujah. No, many Christians think, oh, our governments are just playing the card of environment. Why should we take care of our environment? Many Christians have even asked me that question. Why should we care of our environment? Did you know God was the first person who told Adam to take care of this world, to take care of the God? How many believe God, God was the first God, come on now, who wanted us to take care of our environment? Amen. 
So all of us are collectively, come on, collectively and jointly responsible in taking care of our environment. But Christians say that we don't need to, that is a Buddhist view. It's not the Buddhist view. Even God, before you, Buddhism came later, God of the Old Testament spoke to Adam. He said, I've given you the garden, take care of it. How many believe God gave Adam the responsibility of taking care of his creation? Amen. How many believe we have been given that responsibility to take care of this world? Right. Then why should we fight against protecting our environment? Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. How many are ready to have the mind of God? Amen. Come on, protecting the environment is the mind of God. Getting involved in the political process is the mind of God. How many believe that? Amen. Praise God. Getting involved in the social process is the mind of God. Getting involved in the moral process is the mind of God. Getting involved in the economic process is the mind of God. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. One person said, I don't care who gets elected. As long as they promise me my bread, my butter, my roof over my head, and a bed to sleep on, I don't care who comes to power. How many are ready to defend those who usher peace in the world? Come on now, Amen. in our communities, to protect them, to rally behind them, and say, these are the people who promoted peace. These are the people who bought a season of peace. Come on now. Amen. We got to put in office those who have maintained peace in our communities. How many believe that is true? Praise God. Yes. Peace in our nation. Oh, you see the debates, people are all confused. Hey, don't be confused. Seek God and let God direct you. How many believe God knows yes. who he wants to put in office? Years ago, when I first came in this country, some of the preacher friends, they, they knew of me. They came and picked me up at Greece Airport. airport. And they, didn't, and they said, we heard you're a prophet. I, I didn't say a word. They said, you're a real prophet. Before we can really use you, he said, tell us who's going to be the next president of the United States. At that time, George Bush, the father of Bush, and the Cassis were running. How many of you remember the Cassis and George Bush were running for office. So they said, we want to know if you're a real prophet or a false one. <laughs> Openly they said this. And they said, tell us who will win, who will be the next president. So I closed my eyes and I prayed. I said, Lord, you said you, how do you know the Bible says God appoints leaders? Amen. Is it not God appoints leaders? So I closed my eyes, I prayed and said the book was written George Bush. And they said to me, oh no, he's not going to win. Lucasus is in the lead and Lucas is going to win. I said, I don't care who says what. But God says he will be put in office. And how many know that's what happened in the end? Amen. And after he got elected, then they began to say, you're a true man of God. That was the test I have to pass. <laughs> how many of us love the Lord? Come on, how many believe God knows everything? <laughs> Come on, how many believe God knows everything? Amen. Praise God. How many believe the Lord? Hallelujah. I'm going to look for people who love peace. Who promote peace, who are the guardians of peace. Come on, hallelujah. Yes. Who love peace, who promote peace, and are the guardians of peace. Yes. How many believe that's how we should cast our vote in the next election? Come on, yes. praise yes. God, hallelujah. How many believe peace is the greatest blessing man can have? Yes. We may not have food, but if we have peace, we can somehow make it. Yes. But if you have food, you have clothing, you have everything you have, and no peace. What's the use of all we got? How many believe Jesus is called the King of Salem? He's the King of Peace. And he's called the God of Peace. He is peace. How many are ready, praise God, hallelujah, to do the right thing in the days to come? Yes. Come on now, praise God. If you see them further down, the, all those things are there. And it is so amazing. This is going to take more time than that. So it's so amazing to find how we are right in the 38th chapter of Ezekiel. Come on, the 38th chapter of Ezekiel. Russia has already now started planning to keep their base in the Middle East for the first time. They have bought their tanks, they have bought their military, that they want to make it a base of their own. How many can see this is getting close? I will bring them to the Middle East. Is it not? So when these things are coming, 
when these signs are being fulfilled, if this is true, then the return of Jesus in the clouds for the church is real. First time Jesus will come in the cloud, thus take the church away. But the second time he comes to a call, the second advent of the earth is after, praise God, Hallelujah, the seven years are over, he will come and mount all his call, the church, and there we will descend, and the future, rest of the things will take place. How many believe we are very close? Amen. Amen. How many believe we are that close, my friend? Amen. Come on, we are that close, hallelujah. So look at God. How many believe God never ignores the people who call on his name? The people who are suffering, the people who feel they're used and misused, neglected, rejected, come on, neglected, rejected and ignored. And they throw you out as if you're just nothing but trash. But God says, though I paid attention and I will bring settlement to your life and I will settle you down. How many are ready for God to step in? Come on, praise God. I know who this here. Anyone that is feeling very unsettled tonight about what is going on, you are sitting right here, and the Lord told me to tell you that God will settle things for you. Just be at peace, and He'll take good care of you. Amen. How many are ready for God to step up Amen. and to take care of you? Come on, praise God, Hallelujah! How many believe God knows? God is very much involved in our political process. Yes. Yes. Come on, praise God. He, he raises leaders. Come on, he raises leaders. Because he knows, come on, he knows who will do what's right. Amen. How many of that's how God works? God gave a chance to King Saul. Is it not? God gave a chance to King Saul. But he did not live up to the expectations. Then God raised David. How many believe God raised David? God gives a fair chance to everyone, but we got to prove ourselves to God. The only believe David was a promoter of peace. He was a lover of peace and a guardian of peace. But Saul was for war. He never gave David peace, is it not? How many of us know God takes the side of those who love peace, who promote peace, and are the guardians of peace? You are ready? Praise God. Hallelujah. How many say, Lord, I'm going to take the side of peace? Yes, amen. Come on, praise God. I'm going to take the side of peace. Repeating, I'm going to take the side of peace. You are ready? Praise God. Hallelujah. How many are ready? Say, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to take the side of peace. Yes, amen. You are ready? Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Those who promote peace, those who love peace, and those who are guardians of peace. God is ready to take your side. He will never allow, he will never allow a person who hates peace to ever, ever, ever destroy peace order. So, he will destroy the order of peace. But God, hallelujah, found David, a man of the God's own very heart. And David ushered the order of peace. You got it? Come on now, praise God, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. How many of us are ready to say, Lord, these are exciting days, and I'm looking up. Yes. I'm looking up. How many are ready for God to move upon your behalf? Yes. Praise God, hallelujah. Many of us are very clannish. Come on. Many of us are very clannish. Many of us think blood is thicker than water. Hello, praise God, hallelujah. How many believe in God's eyes that doesn't work? In God's eyes, that doesn't work. Blood is thicker than water, doesn't work. Hello, oh, praise God, you got upset. You're going to be a little more upset in the next few remarks. Praise God, hallelujah. But God pays attention to those who love peace. Now, how many of you knew Hagar could have fought Sarah? How many women, some women know how to fight? Amen. Don't look sideways, look at me. <laughs> some women have a gift to fight. <coughs> gift to fuss, gift to argue. Some
some do. Hagar, being an Egyptian, how many Egyptian women are there now? They are boisterous in those days. She could have fought Sarah, said, no, he's my husband too, he's the dad, he got to support me, I ain't leaving. In fact, Sarah was the one who was the war path. <laughs> Whose side did God take? Sarah's or Hagar's? Sarah's. Hagar's. Sarah. Why, when she was rejected, ignored, neglected, she peaceably left. She was a lover of peace. She wanted peace. And God took her side. Amen. Amen. can see this. God doesn't matter if you're a Christian or, or a non-Christian. If you love peace, you, how many believe the Bible says, follow peace with all men, without which no one shall see God. Amen. And with the holiness, no one shall see God. So if you're a Christian and you go to church to cause a fight, to start a fight, to instigate a fight, and keep the church in the fighting mood, God ain't taking your side. Right. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. One man came to his brother and said, I just don't know. My wife is always in a war path. I said, what do you do? He said, sometimes I feel like doing something. But I said, what, 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 then why don't you do it? He said, no, I just want peace. I said, God will take your side. So his wife gave him a hard time. And when he comes home from work, she doesn't even cook food. She buys him a McDonald's fish sandwich. <laughs> Come on, and French fries. And it's cold there, waiting for him on the table. He sits alone and eats his cold uh, leather. How many of those friends, especially McDonald's uh, fries, are like leather when they get cold? Tell me about it. And if you go to the drive through, they'll cheat you. <laughs> What I went to drive to, I said I want a cheeseburger. I had a burger, but you know what? Only lettuce and tomato. The meat was missing. <laughs> I said, hey, drive to is stealing business. <laughs> you better go in and see what you get. Yeah. Hello, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not blaming the person at the counter. It depends on the person who's putting their food together. Yeah. Hey, there's something there in hurry, whatever. But they don't pay attention. How many of us know there are some people who are ready to fight? But there are some people who say, I am going to fight. I'm going to be peaceful. And let the Lord fight my man. How many of you want God to take your side? Hagar was not a Jew. In our terms, she was not a Christian. But God allowed her to hear the audible voice of God and call her by name. How many, of them, how many of you know it's not your perfection, it's not how holy you are, it's your attitude that matters to God. <laughs> you may be religious, you may be, uh, you may be religious is true, but you may be a person who's always want to pick up a fight and start a fight and never end the fight. Right. Hey, there are some Christians, so-called fake Christians, who are gifted in keeping the fight going. Right. If you meet someone like that, run away from them as fast as you can. If you don't, they are going to start a fight with you too. Yes. How many of us love the Lord this evening? Yes. How many say, Lord, I am going to promote peace. Yes. And God will take my side. Come on, those who bark and those who yell and those who scream and those who do what they want to, hello, praise God, let them keep on barking. Say, Lord, I'm going to follow peace with all men. I may not be perfect, but I'm God going to follow peace. I'm going to love peace. I'm going to, hey, praise God, proclaim peace. Watch God take your side. Praise God, hallelujah. How many are ready? For this exciting time. Yes. 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 There are some who will never give you peace. But God is going to settle this matter for you. And you will have peace hereafter. How many are ready for God to step in? Yes. Amen. Then stand to your feet.